Uh, Impact. So, if you didn't watch Impact, uh, even though it's all over the timeline and everyone's having like a field day with it, um, I know I am. My brain, you know, if I don't do this, I'm probably not going to go to sleep. Uh, but if you don't want to hear what happened, you know, you don't have to tune in. You can watch after the fact, after you know what happened. But I really do have to say that Bullet Club is the only faction to really still have that you know, that shot heard around the world type of feeling, that emotion. Like, Bullet Club still has that with everybody that they have um, in Bullet Club. Um, and I love that each member, uh, you know, has their own little inner conflicts uh, going here and there. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, necessarily, I really should not be starting off on, like, such a really good positive note about Bullet Club uh, just because it's like, you know, what the fuck, Jay White? <laughs> I have been like a huge fucking advocate for Jay White, right? You know, everybody knows that, uh, I love Jay White. I put him over. I'm like, hey, I did this character spotlight on Jay White. I did this, blah, 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 you know, but that doesn't mean that I'm just going to like drop him because he decided to do a Blade Runner on Tama, which is, you know, he's also a cool dude and, um, you know, another one that I support in Bullet Club. But like, to do that now, of all things, even though he's been on multiple interviews and he's like, he wants to create a bigger Bullet Club where he invites everybody from every organization to create this massive Bullet Club thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure if like, you know, if you run that by Tama, I'm not sure if he'll like that or not. But um, then again, he took matters into his own hands um, by, you know, deciding to betray Tama and doing the Blade Runner and allowing the good brothers who don't need the tag team titles, I'm still going to say it no matter what, um, you know, allow them to retain it. And it's like, you know... This is why I coined the phrase of Jay White does Jay White things, right? It only works for Jay White. So basically what it means is that um, Jay is in it for himself, no matter what. Even though, like, he's part of a group. Uh, yo, Dex. Yeah, I know. I saw the picture. Um, it's just that I'm poor and I no longer have the funds to keep up with uh, the Patreon over at Thomas Island. So like, you know, I bet it was fucking nuts. Like if you read my whole entire timeline, it's all about these mini like think pieces of like, what the fuck, right? Um, are, are we, are we blaming Ross? Like, does Ross know? <laughs> like, did, did, did he get told anything? Like, I don't know, man. But, um, but yeah, like, other than that, like, um, so like I was saying that, the good brothers still don't need the tag team titles. Um, but yeah, Jay White does things for him and his benefit only. And that's what I've learned ever since making that character um, podcast episode all about Jay White. And like, so that way people can know about his history because the first time Jay White came over to Impact, people were like, who the fuck is this? And then it's like, now you guys want to jump on the bandwagon, huh? Um, you know, if it wasn't possible, like myself and other people out there who are like, yo, Jay White is a shit. You guys would not be on that bandwagon. You guys would be, like, connected to, like, Cornette and his stupid-ass shit. About, like, you know, oh, he's not a star. He never wrestled in the States. And it's like, well, here you go. I made a podcast all about Jay. Um, so, yeah, I will feel some type of way. Uh, any water. He did, though, in one of the episodes of, I guess, I, not really episodes, in one of the interviews that he did, uh, talking about Jay, that he did say that the 
um, the conflict between the good brothers and Tama is basically like theirs. Like, so he has no interest or no fight in that at all because, uh, he doesn't, he didn't really have a bad experience with, uh, the good brothers. So Jay White's thinking is that if he didn't have a bad experience with the people that Tama and the rest of Bug Club had a bad experience with, then it doesn't really matter to him. See, this is where he becomes that like opportunistic type of fucking wrestler that, you know, I've grown to love and like appreciate and then like push everywhere. Um, so like, this is why Jay White does Jay White faint. He sees opportunity. He's going to take it. I do not think that by, uh, doing a Blade Runner and having, uh, the Good Brothers pin Tama that, uh, G.O.D. is out. Uh, uh, I don't really think so. Uh, I just think that, um, you know, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I just think that, um, there's going to be a lot of revenge. Um, if you know, they happen to be out, it's only going to be about like, you know, they're out, but then they're going to have like firing squad. Um, and now Bullet Club has been broken up into like spinoffs. So like we have the House of Torture, which is basically evil, usual show, uh, and Dick Togo, um, you know, and then even though they're still part of Bullet Club, but they're House of Torture, um, which they could have came up with a different name. Um, and then this happened, most likely Firing Squad is coming back. I do not want a civil war. I really don't. Um, I lived through that first... Bullet Club Civil War, and, um, you know, I just can't deal with another one. However, I think this one will be different only because, well, it may or may not be different because, again, like, I'm a fan, I'm still a fan of Jay White, I'm still a fan of Tama, um, you know, these two are on opposite sides, uh, when it comes time for this Civil War, um, you know, uh, I, I don't want to choose, I don't want to do like I did last time. The last time was between Kenny and the Elite, and then you had Cody and like the Ring of Honor Bullet Club uh, section, which is fucking stupid. Um, that was an easy choice. I picked Kenny. Um, I, I picked uh, Kenny over uh, Cody because I'm just not that big of a Cody fan. I'm like, there's nothing different, um, you know. Uh, with Cody, so it's like, you know, why? Um, I'm really trying to find, like, the words to put into this, like, post-review of this, because I have only questions. I don't have answers. Um, as much as I can, like, interact with the other side of the party, like, I don't have answers. Um, and I'm not the type to be, like, the dirt sheets and be like, let me give you all the answers I have, let me give you all the scoops I have. No, like, you know, this is what makes being a wrestling fan fun, uh, that I get to experience these emotions with the guys that I like, the guys that, you know, I definitely want to push and the guys that, um, I like creating for, um, just because, you know, that's what I love to do. Like I was like, yo, I wish I was part of that, all of that, um, to feel all the emotion and stuff like that. Um, I am surprised that Chris Bay was part of it. But then again, Jay was the one that recruited Chris Bay. So, you know, why doesn't like, you know, Chris Bay go along with Jay White? Like that made sense. But the funny part is, is that I complimented Chris Bay's gear at the beginning of the show. And then all of a sudden that swerve happened. And I knew automatically like something was going to go down when Chris Bay came up, uh, came in and then like got on the ring apron and like distracted the referee. And so, like, uh, I was like, yo, uh, there is something going on. And basically, I was like, yo, this is not <laughs> going to end well. Um, but, yeah, the funny part is, is that I complimented on Chris's gear, and then all of a sudden, this swerve happens, and I'm like, ah, oh, he finessed me. That That's what happened. He fucking finessed me. Um... Dex says, uh, I'm not sure what will be left of Bullet Club when the firing squad returns. Exactly. Like, you know, 
it's the same thing. It's the same conversation I had with like other people about like whenever we talk about like is WWE gonna sell and stuff like that. Like you know, I can't imagine a world where there's no Bullet Club. You know, um, I can imagine a world where there's like Bullet Club, but then like there's different like um, sections in Bullet Club which I could deal with. So like I could deal with the over arc of like Bullet Club, and then we got House of Torture, and we got Firing Squad. And we got, like, I don't know, do we want to consider uh, El Phantasmo and Taiji Ishimori for the, like, cutest Bullet Club tag team? Uh, Bullet Club's cutest, like, you know, that. Uh, so I can live with that. I just can't live in a world without Bullet Club just because of, like, what they stand for. And that, like, really connects with me. Like, their whole ideal, their whole... um ideology like connects with me as a fan uh yo these uh these um these freaking bots over on youtube uh dex also says we said this but what about uh hikaleo uh tagging with jay and chris bay all year yeah like i said that on twitter i was like yo does this explain why we had the sudden breakup of hikaleo and chris bay as a tag team like you know i thought it was kind of weird that um you know they were showing more of like chris bay tagging with jay white uh, Chris Bay being more involved with G.O.D. and, um, you know, Tama putting his, his arm around Chris. And that's like, yo, Tama gave you a hug, Bay. Like, you know, <laughs> you were cheesy when he gave you a hug and then all of a sudden, um, you know, uh, you go and side with Jay and, you know, decide to be like, yeah, all right, cool. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, that's just something. Uh, but, uh, yeah, see, while I'm talking, I'm also on Twitter, too, to try to see if I can get, like, some other ideas and, you know, talk about that. Uh, but then again, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I questioned. <laughs> Freaking the Tama Island crew. Like, I love the family that Tama created within, like, Tama's Island. They're, they're a bunch of good people. I like them. They're cool. Uh, but that's, you know, that's for you guys to know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, like, you know, that was my whole thing of, like, you know, is that the reason why, um, you know, uh, did they stop having them tag? Um, and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I immediately thought of, um, Jado. I sort of miss Jado being there with the, you know, with G.O.D. Um, you know, I wish that, uh, Jado was there. It'd be nice if Jado can, like, go to Impact. So does Gato. Like, imagine if, uh, if Gato comes back and Gato is, like, Switchblade done well. Because, you know, he still promotes that. It's still his era. So, you know, uh, yeah, that'd be very nice for, uh, for him to come over. Um, another thing too, is that there's so many moving parts. So like, um, after that whole thing, freaking Jay White goes and tags the Young Bucks. And that right there is like, oh, this is getting good. Um, I really now think that, um, because he tagged the Young Bucks, we are probably going to see um, the Good Brothers back in um, uh, AEW. Um, okay, so that's... Oh, that's great. My uh, restream chat just restarted. Um, but yeah, I really think that we are going to get... Um, the Good Brothers back in AEW. That better not be like the massive surprise that um that basically uh Tony Khan wants. And I bet you after all this, he'll probably act like a man child to um 
to basically try to get the the views on him and AEW. Um, so that way, whatever his big surprise is for next week, um, you know, he could definitely be like, oh my God, you guys got to tune in and stuff. And it's like, well, if you were doing compelling storylines, how Impact is doing it, then, you know, people would tune in. Um, but if you're not, and you're constantly thinking, what's the next big thing I can sign? What's the next big thing that can like debut? And I'm not talking about Brock Lesnar you know, it's going to, like, fall flat. The charm of that is really going to fall flat. Um, so, yeah. Um, I will say that uh, the name of this episode is um, I'll Take That L. Because... Give me a second here. Uh, Because I said, <laughs> this is not what I wanted to do during my post match thing, but I have like nothing set up uh, that I want it at. Uh, <laughs> Tony wishes they had this on their show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, of course, but, you know, like I said, if he's, if he's constantly in, um, that, that mood of, um, if he's constantly in that mood of, uh, what do you call it? Um, okay. If he's constantly in that mood of, you know, I gotta, I gotta review this guy. I gotta sign this guy. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta do this. Um, you know, it's gonna lose its like charm. And then what else is he gonna do? Who else is he gonna debut? That's like, you know, it's gonna be like the run of the mill, like local indie guy that's gonna be like, oh my God, he's gonna change, you know, uh, AEW. And it's like, no, that's not gonna happen. Um, but see, I was originally thinking that Tony Khan's big, massive, like, message, debut, I don't know what, we, I don't know what we're calling it now, man, but, um, I think that he's probably going to try to get Tanahashi to come over, uh, only because Jay White doesn't just, you know, poke the bear for no reason. Jay White does everything for a reason, and, you know, he was fighting Trent on Rampage, and he goes and does uh, the dragon screw. That's what Tanahashi does all the fucking time. And then he proceeded to play air guitar. So that's a direct, like, poking the bear at Tana. Tanahashi just lost his IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship title to Sonata. Congratulations to Sonata for getting his first ever uh, title belt. But Tana's without a championship belt. Tana's going to be on, like, a little bit of recovery. And if... Tony Khan can bring Tana over. You know he's going to start some shit with uh, Jay. You know he's going to uh, defend the honor of best friends because, you know, he knows them. Um, and then, you know, since they're part of chaos, uh, Tana knows chaos too. So, you know, they're cool, you know. So I'm just putting two and two together that, like, after doing that, poking the bear, that's like, you know, Tanahashi's going to show up on AEW. Um, it's not going to be Okada. It's going to be uh, Tanahashi because Okada doesn't make sense for right now to show up on AEW. But then again, you know, I just wish that AEW would stick to their stories and not worry about anything else and leave the actual um, <clears throat> praise to uh, Impact because Impact knows how to put over New Japan stars better than AEW. If you're not like... AEW, like a cheerleader for like AEW, they're not going to put you over. They're not. They're, AEW's in it for themselves and that's very evident of like how Tony Khan like treats everything, like the structure of the show, uh, treats, uh, you know, non-AEW people coming in. If you're an indie talent that has been on like GCW and like the rest of the indie circuit, you know, you get the treatment of being like you're part of AEW, but if you're from New Japan or Impact, don't even think about it, you know? Um, but yeah, I personally think that 
Tanahashi is the one that's going to, um, you know, uh, come over to AEW. Yeah, but getting back to the whole thing that, um, geez, here we go, man. Here we go. Now Tama is going to, uh, go in a war of words with, uh, Jay White, but Jay White does, does his best talking in interviews. Um, and, uh. And also on Twitter too. Uh, and this is why I was saying that like, I don't want to pick. I I don't want to pick. I want to support both of them. And I don't know how the fuck I'm going to support both of them um, in this. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I just saw that Dex. I just, I just saw that. He called Jay White a dead man. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> great. Oh my God, man. Um, this just really tells me that there's one or two things that are probably going to happen. One, this is really going to be a split where we're going to have the different factions. We're going to have uh, House of Torture is going to be fine. Um, El Phantasmo and Taiji are finding themselves. I'll get to them in a minute because they have a very interesting like inner conflict story that I love and I want to share it, but we'll get to that in a moment. If I don't, we'll get to that tomorrow. I'll break down almost everything. Um, then we have firing squad. Cause you know, after that shit, uh, firing squad comes in for that. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's it in bullet club in a way. Um, geez, man. So yeah, I really do not want to choose. Um, oh, so that's, that's one way where like, um, everyone goes to their respective teams and then, uh, they branch out and do what they got to do, but maybe it's still under the banner of Bullet Club. Or option two, um, this is Jay White just getting under all of our skins, right? He's uh, doing the Satama. Um, and then he's going to be destroying Bullet Club from the inside out. When I say him, I mean Jay White. Jay White is going to be destroying Bullet Club from the inside out. Because, again, Jay White does things for himself, for his benefit. If he does not see anything beneficial in what he's doing, he's not really going to do it. Unless he just wants to, um, unless he just wants to like do it for the sake of doing it. But, um, other than that, like Jay is very tactical. Um, he's very tactical. He knows what he's doing. Um, so I just think that because he's trying to show the young bucks in good faith of, you know, him, um, you know, doing this, uh, he's probably going to turn his back on the young bucks. The first victim of course is going to be Adam Cole. We know this. Um, he's gonna, the first victim is going to be Adam Cole. Um, and then, you know, the young bucks, uh, Kenny is not going to come back for a while. Uh, during his interview with, uh, uncle Dave, um, he basically said that, uh, you know, he thought he could come back in February. And yo, if I would have saw Kenny Omega come back in February, I would have been like, can someone call this man an Uber or like something, take his ass home because like, it makes no sense for you to be there. Like, no, you need to get all that shit that you dealt with taken care of. Like, you know, um, but yeah, um, I just think that this is either going to be maybe Maybe the end of Bullet Club. Maybe not the end of Bullet Club. Like, I don't know why those words came out of my mouth. Um, you see, Jay is always doing some shit, right? Where he gets he, he gets me the most views. Trust me. Like, the more that I podcast about him, which I love podcasting about him, he gets me, like, all this, like, cool shit. Like, views, people that chat with me, and then, like... You know, he goes and does this and I'm like, I can't really fault him, uh, for this only because if you really think about it, um, Tama has been on the baby face side for a while. Um, you know, uh, 
he showed it in the G1 along with um, Loa. They were, you know, not doing Bullet Club tactics and they are known for Bullet Club tactics. And Bullet Club tactics is using everything and anything in your environment. Um, but the fact that they weren't using Bullet Club tactics in the G1 probably set the stage for like, you know, Bullet Club is about hurting people. Bullet Club is about making sure that they understand um, that you don't fuck with Bullet Club. Not to say that Tama was getting soft or anything. It's just that, you know, they were slowly turning into baby faces. I don't know if... Uh, <laughs> this is, this is going to be so weird. Especially when I'm like, yo, can I, you know, is, if I appear... On Thomas Island, this is going to be so weird. Um, just because he has a personal vendetta against uh, Jay White. And I support both of them. And I'm here like, what the fuck? Um, but maybe like, this is all just for, you know, Jay to really like be leading Bullet Club. But if he's leading Bullet Club, he's the one doing the most work by showing up everywhere and getting more eyes on Bullet Club and stuff like that, you know. Um, everyone else is trying to, uh, so, you know. But today, we basically saw Jay White everywhere. Uh, Jay White was doing New Japan Strong, and then he was doing Impact, and he does AEW. Like, he's everywhere. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Dex says, at least Tama turned, at least Tama turned up for the G1 repping Bullet Club. Yeah, that's true. And he did call out Jay about, you know, about that. Um, and you know, Jay should have been there for the G1 if he wanted to really, really talk his shit. Um, maybe that could have been it. I bet you like when they do the promos that Jay is going to say some shit about like, um, the G1 and all this kind of shit, like, it's going to get so good. Um, you know, and then this is like a better version of Bullet Club rivalry, just because of like, Jay knows how to tell a really good story where you're hooked. Yes, the Young Bucks and Kenny did like, um, you know, had a very good story with like Cody and the rest of them and stuff like that. But sometimes... When it comes to the creatives of, like, Americans, it sometimes falls flat. <laughs> and then it, come, it becomes very childish as to why, like, we're in this feud, why we're doing this, why we're doing that. When it comes to, you know, training in Japan and being around that culture, or just, like, thinking outside the box... That's when, like, story grabs you in and stuff like that. So that's why, you know, when Jay White tells his stories, I'm always captivated by it because there's something different about it. When Tama tells his stories, I'm captivated by it because this fucking guy wears his passion on his fucking arm. And it's like, I can, I can relate to that. Um, other than, you know, getting the chance to, you know, just hang out with him on Tama's Island. Um, like the podcast. Uh, but yeah, Dex is totally right that, uh, Jay has a hell of a week. Um, he has been putting in the work and I'm really, you know, proud of him and proud of everyone else, but I did not, I did not see that coming at all. Um, that swerve or anything. Um, I really don't know how to really feel about it. I'm going to be, I'm going to have to try, I'm going to have to try to be my... I was going to be like, be my neutral best, but I don't know how this is going to work. Um, and you guys might think that I'm crazy or whatever it is, or that, you know, somebody in the, in the comments would be like, oh, you know, it's fake or whatever, but this is real to me. Like, this is what kayfabe is all about. This is what feeling emotion is all about. This is what being a wrestling fan is all about without, you know, name calling somebody on Twitter or attacking them personally and stuff like that. Like I still have a lot of respect for these guys. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, what the fuck? And like, just go off on a tangent and be like, he was my favorite wrestler. And how could you do this? Blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like I get it. I understand the business. I understand the business a lot more than other people out there on Twitter. I'm just saying, but, uh, yeah, 
I just think that um, this was not, I did not see this coming at all. Um, and I don't know why I didn't see it coming. But then again, you know, it's better to, um, it's, it's better to be along for the ride than trying to like nitpick and trying to put all the pieces together. Because something like this, this is really huge. It's really huge because now you're like, is G.O.D. out of Bullet Club? Is, you know, the Good Brothers back into Bullet Club? But then again, when you leave silently, right? You technically give up your spot as leader. You don't just come back in and be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm leader. That means that if G.O.D. is out and J.Y. is like, I'm the leader, that's it. I don't think Carl Anderson wants to play second best to Jay White. I don't think the um I don't think the Good Brothers like really would consider Jay White to be their equal, you know? Um if they weren't going to consider GOD to be their equal or anyone else to be their equal because the Good Brothers don't consider people to be their equal. So like what are the chances are what are the chances of the Good Brothers betraying Jay White. You know, that could fucking happen. Where the Good Brothers are like, thank you for her, um, thank you for having us like win the match. Thank you for, you know, interfering and shit. But what happens if the Good Brothers turn on Jay? Like, no one's gonna fucking see that shit coming. Well, maybe me, because I said it here on the podcast and I said it here um on Twitch and also on YouTube. Um, so you know, if I'm right, give me a high five. Um, Dex says, uh, this is storytelling at its best. Game of Thrones has nothing on Bullet Club history. I can't speak to the second part because I never watched Game of Thrones. Um, and I know the comments are going to be like, what the fuck? But yes, I have not watched Game of Thrones. Um, but yes, this is storytelling at its best. And I will try to do everything in my power to break this down for you guys. Cause this is a lot to unpack, especially for someone like me who's been following Bullet Club, who's been following Jay, Tama, you know, uh, the elite and stuff like that. And, you know, I love to fucking research. And if you guys want to hear me break down everything, uh, there's a way that you can do that to help me continue to do that. The simple thing is to go support me at KO, ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows. Uh, the cool thing about supporting me over there is you get to hear someone's special theme song. Um, and I will play it for you guys in a moment um, as I do this. So, um, like I said, I love professional wrestling like everyone else out there. I am a female content creator that makes professional wrestling videos and have, you know, my show the Square Circle podcast like no other. I break down wrestling matches. This is what I love. I love the kayfabe. I love the storytelling. This is why I have a writing degree with my publishing certificate. Again, I'm Marie Shadows. And if you want to hear more of me talk about wrestling um, on here and then other people's podcasts, you know, just let the world know. But if you want me to do that breakdown history for you and try to put the, pu the puzzle together, which would be super fun, and have me do this 24-7, uh, when you support me at ko-fi.com forward slash Marie Shadows, you are definitely going to hear this particular theme song. So, if you want to be doused in, you know, Rainmaker, Okada, five-star match, seven-star match, Okada, who is the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion over at New Japan Pro Wrestling, and um, tomorrow for us, uh, the 20th, but it's already the 20th over there in Japan, he's facing Naito, and um, I'm probably going to say here on the podcast that Naito is not going to get that belt off of him. Uh, Thomas still has that shot to get the belt off of him. But if you want to be serenaded, that's the word I was looking for, serenaded. If you want to be serenaded in Okada, 
That sounds wrong. I am so sorry. But if you want to be serenaded with the Okada theme song, that sounds right. <laughs> it's late, okay? I don't do post-match reviews, all right? I really, really don't do post-match re post reviews um, or post-pay-per-view, um, you know, reviews. But the time that I do, just enjoy my fucking quirkiness. But if, like I said, if you want to be, um, you know, serenaded by uh, Okada and Okada's theme song, all you have to do is just head over to ko-fi.com forward slash Marie Shadows. Um, so yeah, uh, there goes my plug. Um, there goes my plug. If anyone in chat uh, does not have, like, any more questions or anything like that, um, you know, or do, uh, drop them now before, like, I end the stream so I can have a good night. I think I'm okay. It wasn't, like, the first time where Jay showed up on AEW and I was like, I can't sleep. I got to talk about this. This one is, like, I can sort of sleep because... You know, there's a lot of interesting factors into this and there's a lot of research for me to do. There's a lot of like old stuff that I got to probably look up and be like, let me try to connect the puzzle or I should wait for like the promos uh, to come out um, and just to follow the story along. But, you know, Jay is probably going to be a dead man by Tama. Um, but I'm still going to love both of them no matter what because they are the greatest thing to ever be in this business. And, um, you know, I'm happy to know that I can um, support their careers and, uh, you know, give Tama lots of love and give Jay lots of love and all of Bullet Club, all of wrestling, because this is what makes me the happiest. Uh, coming on here, talking to you guys about professional wrestling, um, letting you know, like, my background and shit like that and... You know, this is what I live for. I don't live for anything else. Except for, like, other stuff. Um, but, like, essentially, this is what I love to do no matter what. Uh, because I was born to do this. I, you know, studied this whole shit my whole life. And, you know, to talk about wrestling, to get the platform to do it, that's what makes me happy. Um, if I can try to be neutral in this. I'll try to be neutral, but I, I'm not, no, no promises. Um, Dex says, whatever happens as a wrestling fan is going to be amazing to watch. Yes, it is. Um, it's definitely going to be amazing to watch. It's definitely going to be amazing to watch. And I really encourage you guys <clears throat> I encourage you guys to watch along with us, the experts. That means me and there's other people out there that are experts. Um, there's me, there's Ross, there is, um, Hey Karen Sensei, uh, you know, and there's other people. I haven't really checked up other people, but if you really want people from Thomas Island who are experts, us, and then the rest of Thomas Island, which is like all around Twitter. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put us on a high pedestal. Uh, just because, you know, um, we are 100% real, um, and we always roll with the realist, um, in the world and like in the group. Um, but that's me talking for everybody, which I really shouldn't be doing that. But in a sense, when you, uh, meet someone from Thomas Island, you know that they're 100% real. Um, you know. Uh, Jay is probably 100% real, but again, JY does JY things. And, you know, recently I was like, you know, maybe I can try saying Tama does Tama things. And I'm like, no, it doesn't have the same ring to it. Tama doesn't necessarily go into business for himself. Uh, he can if he wanted to. And if he really wanted to, um, you know. Uh, who knows? He probably would have got the IWGP championship a little bit uh, sooner. But at his, at his core, his character core, right? Because again, on this podcast, if I'm ever talking about um, wrestlers, 
I'm not talking about their personal lives. I'm not talking about the personal dumb. I am talking about their characters only because this is all kayfabe. Um, I do not think... No, what? I ha I'm, ha I'm having a, a brain fart here. Uh, oh, at Thomas Core, right? Like his character core... Uh, he is basically, you know, for everyone, even though like when he was a heel, um, he never really went into business for himself, but he made the right decisions to, uh, go after people that have either wronged him or people that, you know, were just in his way. Um, that's what, that's the difference between Tama and Jay. Jay does JY things and Tama just does his own thing. Um, that saying does not really work for Tama. And I was just like, yeah, it just works for Jay. Uh, Jay goes into business for himself. Tama does, if only it's for the greater good of what he's trying to tell. And that's what makes like Tama a really good storyteller. Um, the same thing with Jay. Jay just has it another different way of him doing it. So like, yeah, we're going to get a really great story between Jay and Tama. And you guys are going to be along for the ride. I'm going to be along for the ride. And we're going to have more of these talks together. And as you can see, like, this cheesy-ass smile is because, like I said, this is what I love. You get 100% me, whether it's adorableness, quirkiness, whatever the fuck it is. It's because I, this is how I act. <laughs> uh, you don't get a gimmick when you come to the Square Circle Podcast. You get only good things. Um, yeah, Jay is not going to respond to Tama at all. I'm sorry. I'm back on Twitter, but I think that's everything for now. Um, so I do really, 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 uh, want to thank everyone that decided to show up for the first part of this live stream earlier where I was talking about, um, you know, impact and stuff like that. Um, and anybody that decided to jump in at the end of the Impact pay-per-view to come over here um, and just hear me talk about this. Um, like I said, I could probably go to sleep tonight. It wasn't like the AEW just randomly, hey, it's Jay White, what the fuck is happening, right? Um, this is probably the coolest storyline that I get to watch unfold. I wish I could watch it live. I wish I could cover it live, but I just can't. And that's not because of like anything other than I'm poor. <laughs> that's it. Um, that That's about it. But you guys can definitely change that. Head over to ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows to support me any which way that you can. I'm going to be redoing the membership tiers over there. So think of coffee like Patreon, except that it's better for creatives like myself because I have some wrestling bingo cards over there. Um, which is free or you pay what you want and then some more goodies. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably going to redo it. Uh, my goal is to try to get, um, $11 in like two days. Uh, hopefully we could do that. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. But other than that, those are the plugs. Uh, like I said, I am super passionate about wrestling 100%. I am super passionate about this story unfolding and I will be here every step of the way and we will talk about it and we'll try to figure this shit out. Um, just because I love it already. Um, am I mad at Jay? No. Am I mad at Chris Bay? No. Um, is my heart a little broken? Yeah, it's broken. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, whatever happens in the storyline can't fix it. You know, I want to hope for the best possible outcome. Um, and yeah, that's all I want to do. I want to hope for the best possible outcome. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for me because if not, I'm just going to keep talking in circles because I have nothing else to present. Um, but I will be live streaming tomorrow to talk about all the wrestling that was that happened today which is a little bit of the WWE Elimination Chamber, which I saw the whole thing, but I mean, for like me to review it, it'll be WWE, which by the way, that is a treat because ever since my WWE days, I do not talk about WWE like that. 
I have been appearing on Steve Turnbuckle's um, little mini reviews. Uh, just because, you know, I have WWE on in the background, uh, there are other podcasters out there like uh, the Bama Slammer podcast or Smack Raw podcast that I've been a part of where I talk about WWE, but then again, I have WWE on in uh, my background, uh, just as background noise if I have other work to finish up, and that's only because, like, I fell out of love with WWE um, after you know, uh, my WWE days and they let me go. And, you know, uh, the compelling storylines pulled me in and that's why I'm back to watching it here and there. But like I said, tomorrow is going to be a treat. I do not talk about WWE at all. That's not even part of, you know, my show breakdown, not even. Um, but I just think that the WWE elimination chamber was something a little bit more special um, in terms of story, and then we could talk about maybe why they want to do champion versus champion, um, you know, because I'm going to throw in New Japan Pro Wrestling in there. Like, I'm not going to be shy about it. So tune in tomorrow for that. Uh, also, I'll be talking about, um, well, what else happened today? Uh, oh, yeah. While I was watching Elimination Chamber, I was also catching up on New Japan Pro Wrestling. And, um, you know, their Golden Series, and uh, this was night one of New Japan Golden, which celebrates the 50th anniversary of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And we'll talk about the, um, we'll talk about the story there. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, tune in for me to talk about more of Bullet Club, especially the inner turmoil that uh, El Fantasmo and uh, Taiji Ish Ishimori has been uh, dealing with, uh, which I think is really cool. And I'm going to teach you guys about character development because it seems like not every person understands character development. Um, then we have Impact, which I could talk about in general, and that's about it. I probably won't touch again on the JY Bullet Club mess until after the fact. Um, and then New Japan Strong, which I have to watch. Um, I still have to watch a lot of MOW stuff. And then I have to eventually get back to... Uh, me writing reviews for uh, New Japan Lions War, which you guys, if you haven't watched it, go watch that amazing document uh, documentary series. Um, it's fucking phenomenal. I write the reviews for it. The Fale Dojo really loves it. Um, the the guys over there love it. Um, yeah, I need to get back on that. So see, because I do wrestling twenty four seven, just you know, consider the fact to uh, support me and hear my thoughts and my ideas. And I would love you guys to come into every single chat, say hi, don't be shy. It's okay if you're lurking, but, you know, I'm having this conversation with you guys. Um, you know, we'll figure stuff out. I don't know. Uh, but that's going to be everything for me, from me for tonight. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, post pay-per-view review Impact Wrestling is knocking it out of the park. Tonight was Impact Wrestling presents No Surrender. And I just went over the really Bullet Club fucking mess of, um, oh, of course, of course, Jay White is going to, um, freaking review, um, retweet Chris Bay. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, Impact Wrestling presented No Surrender, and this was just a mini little talk with you guys, because I love I love each and every one of you that show up, um, about G.O.D. taking on the Good Brothers, and I have accepted the L that I am taking, because I said loud and proud that the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, are going to take those titles from the Good Sisters, and they're going to bring them home. And they're going to be champions for a while because I don't believe that the Good Sisters are really good for business when it comes to giving them tag team titles. They haven't really done shit for it or with it or however you want to say it. Um, but yes, um, this is just a short little mini video. Um, welcome to the one viewer that came in. This is me ending the stream. Um, come back tomorrow for all those topics. As much as I could cover, it's going to be really long. It's going to be really great. Um, I hope you guys enjoy wrestling as much as I do. Again, I am Marie Shadows of the Square Circle Podcast, and I will see you guys tomorrow.